Hi guys, welcome to image edit video number four. Okay, uh, we're going to look at this image in Lightroom 5 and just run through a um, quick or relatively quick edit. It takes a bit longer doing the video, obviously, but um, a relatively quick edit of this image. Um, one thing to note as well, just to make aware of these image edit videos, this is a raw file out of camera, um, so it's relatively flat as raw files typically are. Um, so we can see some detail here. Uh, which we won't be able to see once I've finished it because I'm going to add contrast and darken it up a little bit. But you're probably going to see quite a difference um, in the video compared to what I'm seeing in Lightroom. So the exact colors and contrast points and everything like that, it's really difficult to get across because of the video compression on the recording software, the compression once it's uploaded to YouTube. So it's not a true light for like representation. But it's you know, the best thing that we've got so far. Okay, another tip as well is it's worth hitting the L button or the lights out button in Lightroom to get a better overall view of an image without all the distracting elements around, um, you know, the sliders and menu bars and so forth, um, because they can sometimes trick the eye and stop you from noticing some things or affect when you're trying to color correct. Also, as well, if I just minimize Lightroom, make sure that we work on a dark. Um, grey background. Don't have a picture of your kids. That sounds really awful, that doesn't it? Don't have a picture of your kids or anything really bright and colourful as your desktop background or even around your desk area, around your monitor, because that can affect your um, percep perception of colour. It can fool the eye, basically. Sounds really boring here. We've got to have a dull grey background, but it does work. Okay, so we're in Lightroom 5. Uh, we're in my working drive catalog. Um, I'm currently running multiple catalogs in Lightroom 5. Um, <clears throat> for the simple reason is I'm having a big organize, a big sort out, combining multiple catalogs, and I'm eventually going to um, cull it down to, I think, four different catalogs. Uh, this one being the main working one. Uh, now, it's not the main archive, but it's the working drive catalog. So anything that gets shot comes into this catalog first, gets worked on, processed to completion, exported, out to print, what have you. And when the job's completed, it gets exported and then imported into the main archive catalog. Okay, so but I'm going to do a separate video on that side of the workflow of things um, coming up. Now, um, I'm going to keep this image in colour. Um, <laughs> I really do want to go black and white, but I am going to keep it in colour because a lot of the image edit videos I've done so far have been black and white. So uh, we'll stick with colour. Um, here we are, Lightroom 5, on a RAW file, fairly flat. Now, one thing that we will notice is the process here is the current version 2012. If I change this to the 2010 version, look how much detail we lose down here. And you might think, well, isn't that what you're going to do with the processing anyway? D yeah, maybe. But it's really blacked out the shoes and it's really taken the contrast up. Bear in mind, I've not done anything yet. The contrast curve is still set to, um, oh, it's gone to medium. Okay, so that's the change. So on the 2010 process, it defaults to medium. So um, 2003, not a huge change, but the 2012, the file's a lot flatter. And that's better for a starting point for editing. So we've got a linear contrast curve or point curve okay on the 2012 process and the color shifts a little bit i think for the better um so it's worth when you import into a new lightroom 5 catalog that you well you will have to upgrade to use the lightroom 5 um process but it's worth making sure that you switch everything over to the 2012 process and maybe even re-edit some of the images bit of a pain in the ass maybe but i think it's worth it so starting point for this one I'm not going to crop this. Uh, I'm happy with the composition. If we bring up the crop tool, it shows you the rule of third layouts. Okay, Caroline here um, is looking great here on a third. Great shoes, great dress. Okay, and I like the pose. So I'm happy with that. I don't need to rotate it. I don't need to crop. Um, I'm not a big fan of cropping, um, although sometimes you do have to do it, granted. Um, you know, if your camera's not held level or if you've basically made a mess of the shot, then yeah, okay, crop. Um, I mean, it's not like we've not got the resolution in the 5D files. Okay, this was shot with a 5D2, ISO 100, 85mm, that's the 85 f1.8 USM, 
f6.3 and 1 200th of a second so it's all flash exposure um, the flash by the way is off here to the right in another corridor with a grid spot and we can see the direction of the light and it's told here by the shadow the shadows tell you everything okay and we can see a nice defined shadow of Caroline's shape here including um, drop off from highlight to shadow on the arm on this side so first things first um, typically I always start with a medium point curve um, I am currently building a lot of presets to use. I only have my sharpening presets for each camera that I own currently. Um, and I have some extra ones here from On One Software and Matt Kalkowski from uh, Kelby Training. Um, although it's rare that I will actually use these, they're going to be used for an upcoming video on my thoughts on presets and actions and things like that. Uh, anyway, I won't go into that now. So, we'll start with a medium contrast curve. Okay, that's tightened everything up a little bit. Okay, giving us a little bit more contrast. And I would typically come in and back off the vibrance and the saturation. And you might think, well, why if the image is a little bit flat? Well, it's because of what I'm going to do going forward with the image. Okay, now we'll, I'm not going to touch exposure. Exposure is fine, doesn't need touching. And I'm going to bring up the contrast a little bit to about plus 20 uh, actually, probably won't need that much. Um, plus 16. I'm going to take the blacks down just a little bit. And the shadows down just a little bit there as well. It's just going to darken this area a little bit more. Uh, this corridor, by the way, was in a studio. Um, well, not in a studio, but upstairs from a studio that I was using. Um, and it had some quite interesting lines going all the way down it along the floors and the walls. We can't see too much of it here, but it had like arrows going down um, <clears throat> as well. Now, the lighting in the corridor was fluorescent. I hate fluorescent lighting. Um, so I wanted to use an exposure which will kill that. A low ISO, ISO 100. Could have gone to ISO 50. Uh, no real need to. F6.3, 200th of a second. So this is all flash. So... Now let's have a quick look here. Now one thing I like about this dress is the shiny sequiny kind of parts and obviously it's reflected in some of the makeup um, around the neckline there. Okay and also um, on the face as well. So I wanted to use a hard light source which is more specular. Okay rather than say a big umbrella or softbox which would have also washed all of this area with light and to get this kind of effect I mean I wouldn't get this kind of effect with a softbox or an umbrella um, end of the day it's a softer light source but I would have had to gone in and darken all of this using vignettes and gradient tools and uh, do it with light don't do it after the fact okay and we can set we can tell it's a hard light as well we've got a hard defined shadow on the background there as well so and um, we've got medium contrast curve uh, we are on the 2012 current process and Adobe Standard Profile. I use Adobe Standard typically as a base point. I don't bother using the camera standard or camera neutral or faithful. I've just always stuck with the Adobe Standard so I know my starting point for the profile. You can get applications and devices which you can calibrate your cameras. And I'm looking into that but it's you know it costs more money takes more time so it's on the back burner for the moment and that's things like the colour checker passport. Um, one key thing is as well to note I am using a colour calibrated monitor uh, with a colour monkey and we can see the colour monkey is there uh, monitoring the ambient light levels and that's all calibrated uh, at this time <coughs> excuse me as well I'm also full of a cold. Right so let's go let's move on with this now um, the shadows on the point curve, um, we can see here, I can make a little gradual changes, okay, to this, and I'm just going to go plus six on the darks, and probably I'm going to add a little bit more contrast, maybe, um, the highlights, I probably don't really need that much more due to them, because that's just affecting the wall, okay, and the lights, I'll probably just go up just a little, little bit. It's really awkward with the mouse sometimes. So, plus three, and 
highlights again. Ooh, really don't want to do that. Also don't want to drag them down there. That was horrible. Uh, it was fine as it was. Very, very subtle, slight changes. Again, I'm not going to touch exposure. Um, exposure on the face is fine. And I'm probably now just going to add a little bit more contrast. Just a slight little bit. And the reason why I'm not adding a ton of contrast, where are we? Plus 20 at the moment. Because that's just too much. We lose the shoes. Um, skin tone goes all to hell. So we'll back that off to about plus 18, plus 20. And there we go. Now, colour correction. I can um, white balance, of course. Um, I can pick a grey reference point by finding an area which is around 50% and it gets it pretty close to where it should be. Or you can go off a white point here. Now, if the white point is completely blown out, so let's just increase exposure for the sake of demonstration here. Let's give it a bit more. It won't let you white balance. Oh, it did do. Normally it will actually tell you that it can't white balance when it's pure white, so there must be some little bit of detail in there. Okay. So we'll take exposure down. And I'm going to pick an area. And it's fairly close. Now the thing is with looking at colour on skin tone, it's best to actually get a look at the skin tone area whilst you're making adjustments. I think that personally is a little bit too warm. So I'm going to drag that down just a little bit to there. And I'm going to change the tint. Obviously if we go too much green, it looks kind of ill. And now it looks embarrassed. So let's back that off a little bit. I don't want minus 15. That's a bit of a green tint to it. So we're probably going to go, I don't know, plus three. No, not plus five, plus three. There we go. And that looks pretty much bob on on there. One other quick tip as well, if you're trying to color correct for skin tones, um, I mean, it's subjective. You need to be working on a calibrated monitor. I suppose in an ideal world, you need to be using a color checker passport and things like that if you want to be really, really picky about it, but um, they cost money. Um, so you want to make sure actually exposure is good. Mm -hmm. Affects color in a big way. Okay. And if you're struggling seeing the effects on the skin tone, find a white reference point or a gray reference point in the image if there is one. And then you can usually see the cast come onto the white parts pretty quickly. Okay. If it's a little bit off. So I would say it may have a little bit of a green cast coming into that. So plus five. There we go. Okay, looking good. So I'm happy with that. Um, the virus and saturation I usually do take down just a little bit. Okay, um, it's just a personal preference. No, not plus five. Oh, making a mess of it. Minus five, minus five. There we go. <coughs> oh, excuse me again. Okay. So, I'm happy with the colour. I don't need to come into the red luminance, although you do have more control yet still or on the HSL slider uh, for certain things as well. Um, if you click on the black and white, it strips it all and goes to black and white, of course. Now, um, the colour and noise reduction. Now, I'm going to leave this one in. Normally, I pull this slider down, or I actually have an auto import which removes the colour noise reduction. But if we notice here, um, it's changed the colour of the sequence. Now you might like that, you might not, when looking at the image as a whole. So I'm just going to take that back up there and to remove that. And that's just something in terms of the nature of the pattern noise or the red channel or the or the, how the light's reacting um, with the sequence. Okay, granted it's still a little bit red in parts, but not quite as so with that removed. So I'm um, I'll happy to leave that in. Um, the auto noise removal, by the way, is actually here. That's activated on import typically, uh, but this set of images was imported prior to that preset being made. Um, obviously, we can see these other presets here, which I won't use. These are for an upcoming video. Um, here we go. Ready? Let's tell you what. For shits and giggles. Oh, look at that. It's 
from an old Polaroid camera. Oh no, wait, it's from a 5D Mark II. Uh, it's Instagram. Oh, just get rid of that. Okay. Um, yeah, that's awful. Let's not do that. See, there's a reason why I don't use those things. Anyway, um, moving forward. So we've got good contrast. Okay, good colour. Um, I could probably take the contrast up or bring the black channel, the shadow areas down just a little bit. And we can do that here. Now what I'm watching here is I don't want to really lose the shoes. Whilst I know they're dark, we can't see all the detail in them. They're just plain black, um, shiny finished shoes. I still want to see some detail there, the fact that they've got the straps on um, as well. So I don't want to completely lose that. So I'm happy with that. Now, um, next, I'm just going to clean up some areas of the image. And I can see this thing here being a little bit distracting. Now, the best way to do this will be in Photoshop, but I'm going to keep these to Lightroom initially. And we can use the square bracket keys here to make this bigger. And select that area. And hopefully Lightroom, oh, well done. That's not too bad. We'll get rid of that quite nicely, which it has done. Lightroom 4 would have made a right mess of that, by the way. There we go. Um, I'm going to go back to that tool and I'm just going to go to 100% here and we're going to remove um, some little areas like this is a highlight on a dark surface so we'll get rid of that okay you could say these are highlights on a dark surface but I'm not going to go photoshopping or removing all of those because I actually want to keep them and um, we're just going to clean the wall up a little bit. Now, I'm not going to come in here and get rid of every single mark or scratch. It's part of the environment. I'm happy with that. It's fine. You know, if you want to spend hours getting rid of all that stuff, then go for it. Um, that's up to you. Personally, I don't. Um, I'm just going to get rid of some of the more obvious ones. And Lightroom does an okay job. Photoshop is better for blemish removal or cleaning up images, granted. But you can still do a fair bit. Um, in Lightroom, so we'll take that out, and uh, there we go. Um, the little highlights down here on the buckles, I'm going to keep in. I'm fine with those, and that's looking fine. We can see that there is a blemish on the hand here. Now, how well can Lightroom deal with that? Uh, not too badly, to be fair. Usually needs a little bit of adjustment. There we go. Again, Photoshop I know would be better for this, but here we are doing this in Lightroom. Now, in terms of blemishes on any area of a face, I will go into Photoshop and deal with that. I'm not going to do it in this video. Um, but that's for later videos. So, looking at the rail up here, I'm just going to get rid of that black mark. Okay. Now I've moved this over to sample on this wood or this dado rail, whatever it is, rather than the wall because it's a different texture. That's a wall, this is wood. Um, so I'd rather it sample from, from here. There we go. And it's just to clean this up just a little bit. Now, whew, little area there. I'm going to zoom in two to one on this and hopefully it's not going to grab any skin and just remove that away. I would tackle that one probably in Photoshop because uh, okay we can get away with that that'll work uh, this sign it's not too bad um, it's not mega obvious but I would if I was gonna go and take that out I would <coughs> to be honest with you I probably would have rather ripped it off the wall but they might not be very happy with that um, but I would use Photoshop to remove that so that's just a quick image clean up there. I'm happy with the colour and the contrast and how all that's looking. Okay. Um, I don't want to add a vignette to this for the simple fact is it wouldn't really work. We've got a highlight area here, a darker uh, mid-tone area here, really dark down here, really, really, really dark up here. So it's going to look a little Im imbalanced um, bringing in a vignette. So I, I won't bother with that. Um, looking at the framing, I don't need to crop. Um, she's on a third. This could be used for negative space. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So the final thing to do would be, without going into Photoshop, 
is do the cap the sharpening preset. Now I've set these up for each of my cameras that I use. Um, currently the X100, the 60D and the 5D2 with each of the clarity settings and the radius settings and the detail settings as well. They're all fairly close to one another. Um, some images you do make slight changes and back one off or and because it, it depends on what lens you're using. It's like my 24 to 105 I'm not saying it's not a sharp lens. Okay, I will. It's not a sharp lens. Um, so it needs help in the sharpening um, area. So that typically gets a little bit more. Uh, but this was shot with the prime lens, so it's already pretty damn sharp. So, and that just tightens everything up a little bit. Adds a little bit more contrast with the clarity. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, I hate being ill. And it just sharpens things up a little bit. And this is why I've not gone adding a ton more contrast. Um, because I know the sharpening process and the clarity process does that um, after the fact. And there we have okay, the final image. I'm more than happy with that. Um, granted, I will go into Photoshop and do a little bit of work on blemishes. Um, but that would be for another video. Okay, good stuff. Well, thank you very much for watching. Um, going forward with the channel, I'm going to be bringing some more content through. Now, I'm done with the tutorials because what's the point in doing a tutorial for the 5D or the, the X100? They've been around for forever. Um, the 60D ones are done, um, so I'm going to be bringing some other content. So let me know what you would like to see, maybe some more image edit videos. I'll probably continue doing these anyway as a series. Um, I, I will cover my whole workflow um, as well, and I would like to do a shoot, um, show the process of planning the shoot, do the shoot, bring the images in, and do the full edit um, at some point over a series of videos. Um, but any other things that you can think of, let me know, and I'll certainly have a look at doing them for you. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.